Hello and welcome to Crafting with Jane. My name is Jane Allmark and today I thought we would have some fun doing something that's a little bit messy. Um, so I have prepared myself a tray. <coughs> says my dog. <laughs> as soon as I start the video you can guarantee that my little dog is going to be, it's, 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 yes. Anyway, ignore it, she'll stop in a minute. So I have got um, an old tray. I have got um, a couple of sheets of um, kitchen roll and this is watercolour card. Um, any sort of fairly thick watercolour card. Now mine is quite old, I was given it um, like a lot of things. I'm just going to turn around and show you. It is um, the Langton Not Cold Pressed Grain Fin Dale Rowney um, watercolour paper so I've had it for ages as you can see it was only eight pounds so um, it's 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 a good watercolour um, paper and I find that it you know it works really well so we need a spray bottle with some water in this is an old one that used to have some mica in but it's got a nice fine mist so I'm using that um, we are going to be using a um, a media plate or a, um, a mini sort of gel pressy thing it, it's um, like a little bit of acrylic it's not overly sensitive so you can basically just wash it under the tap some of them are quite sensitive and that's fine if you've got one of those you know how to look after it this one was from um, again I believe you can still get them it was from a company called John next door and um, I got a set of four. It was, I won a competition and I was given some money to spend in a craft place. And um, this is what I chose and I haven't really used them. So John next door, media plates, and um, you get a circle, you get an oval and you get two sort of, well, a square and a rectangle. So different shapes. Um, I've chosen the circle because I think that that will work quite well. So we need to take this watercolour paper out of the way so we're not going to get it into anything. And I'm going to put this media, um, this little media plate circle. Um, size of the circle, it is, oh, let me see if I've got a ruler. Um, well, this is, the card space is four and a half, no, four, five and a half inches. So you can see the size of it. I will get a ruler hopefully later, but I want to get started. The other thing is you need a brayer. Now, I've had this one again for a very long time. It's a speedball brayer. It's four inches. It's soft rubber. Um, but again, most of you will have a brayer of some sort. So this is the one that I'm using. Um, I've literally just washed it. Um, so you have a nice brayer, but it needs to be one that's, um, that works. It is a hard rubber rather than the soft foam ones. Okay, and then we need um, an ink pad. Now, you can use all sorts of different inks, but I'm using a Coastal Cabana, um, a Stamping Up ink, because I've got lots of these. So it's, it's using what you've got in your stash. And then we are going to be using some brushos. I've had these brushos for a long time. Um, you can get brushos anywhere. Um, and I've got lots of different colours, so we're going to be using a few of those. Um, and I'm using a, so it's me, I don't know where I've just put it. Um, I've, I've got a fan brush and some water. So let's start and we're sort of going to build up a little scene on this. So the first thing we need to do is, I'm going to take this out of here so you can actually see it. Um, take my brayer and you need to just literally roll and lift, roll and lift because you need to be able to get it right the way across. A reasonably juicy ink pad is good, but that's all you need to get on there. Then I can put that out of the way and I'm going to put this on here, just so that I don't get mess anywhere. And you're just gonna go backwards and forwards. So 
just backwards and forwards again I do a roll up roll up and then do it in others now you will get bubbles um, sorry you will get spots with this sort of ink because it's a water-based ink you can use pigment inks you can use dye inks you can use oxide inks um, you can use what you've got I have to have these so I'm just going backwards and forwards and you can see as I say I've got little bits of if I bring it up a little bit, maybe you can see that. Hopefully it will. Difficult to see on there, but you do get a little tiny bit of sort of pooling. So I'm going to put my brayer down like this. And then I am going to um, get some of the brush -o. Now, I think I'm going to have, what colour shall I have on here? What's this one? That looks quite nice, doesn't it? Moss green. Blues and greens? Maybe blue and yellow. Let's try the yellow one. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and just straight onto it. Just a few little bits, not a lot, because you don't need, as you know, just a tiny little bit on here. So that's that. I close my ink pad. And then I'm going to mist from quite a distance. So you could see that it's quite a distance. Like that. So I've got some little misty bits. Now these haven't started moving yet, but I'm going to sit with them just for a minute because I'm going to get my, so watch them to see what they do. And I've got a little pot of water here, which I need to put on. I've just found out this is an old um, pot that um, you can get with um, savoury dishes in. And I've just found out it's porous. So I've got it on a bit of a plastic thing now. And I've got a fan brush. So the fan brushes are quite good. Again, you can get them in all sorts of... Um, art shops or anywhere like that and I'm dipping it in the water and let me just show you on here so you can see right so that's the water I'm dipping it in and then I'm just tapping it off on the side so because it's slightly off the screen and then I'm going to just tap this on here to get some little splots of water not too much but just a little bit on there so we've just got some sort of circles of water coming in because then that just gives another little bit of texture on there I say it's all a bit of an experiment but I do like doing things with experiments okay so now I'm going to take the watercolor card and put that down on here and I also need to spritz the watercolor card so Spritzing it fairly well, like that, and then I can turn this over and we're going to put it down as much in the middle as I can get it. And you can see as soon as you put it down, can you see how it's all sort of bleeding across and making rather nice sort of patterns now some of it will bleed out a little bit but that's fine I don't mind that so much and I'm just going to let it sit there just for a second because I want to just get it to soak in and just give that sort of really nice sort of look to it and as I say you can't really get this look any other way by doing this then as I pick it up I need to see to make sure that it's going to come nicely. So I think some of it is going to, oh, look at this. See how it's sort of watering. Let's have a look and see how it's going to go. Oh, you can see how the water is pooling. Can you see how that water is pooling on it? It's quite interesting. I think I've probably sprayed a little bit too much on here. So I'm going to try and pick this up fairly 
quickly and turn it over. Oh, because I don't want it to run too much. And I'm going to take some kitchen roll and just mop that up because I don't want that to come in too much on there. Okay, so we've now got a really sort of subtle background on there. But it does look quite pretty, so I'm going to leave that to one side. Like that. Until it's dried out. And I'm going to take my press and just clean that off a bit. Okay, so that's a very pale, pastely, but I think beautiful colours, if you can see. They're really nice colours in there on watercolour um, paper. Now I'm going to use um, white, thick cardstock. So again, says me, I've cut the whole pile of white cardstock out. Yes, I have. I've put it down on here. Excuse me a second so I can get that out of there. So this is going to be on just white cardstock like that. Okay, and we're going to the same size and I'm going to take the gel press back again and I'm going to put the blue across. I've just cleaned it up. I think I might, I don't know whether I need a little bit more or not. So I'm doing the same colours so you can see the difference between watering it down and not watering it down. I'm just going to give a little bit of just a little bit more colour on here, that's better. And you can see again, because I've put some more ink on it, you do get this sort of um, like mottled look in on here, but that's fine. I don't mind that at all because that gives some of the texture in on there. I just want to make sure that I've rolled it backwards and forwards so we've got quite a lot of colour on there, which we have move that across and again I'm going to do exactly the same colours so these are the um, the what are they called um, oh dear I completely lose my thing um, brushos so this time I'm putting some directly into another little pot just a tiny pot and I'm putting you can probably see just a few crystals like that. Not a lot, because you don't actually need a lot. But they, because they're very pigmented. Then I'm taking my brush again, dipping it in a little bit of water, tapping it off as we did before. And then I'm going to take it in here and I'm just going to, can you see I'm just mixing it up so I've got my fan brush coated in the yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to tap it with the yellow. Come on. I think I've got little bits coming out on here. Might need just a little bit more water on here. I'm just getting it just a little bit of water so that it's a bit, just a little bit wetter. Because I think it needs to be just a bit wetter. That's better. So I'm just doing little, little bits on here. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, just clean my brush off to the side. Then I'm going to get my um, ordinary cardstock. No spritzing or anything on this at all turn it over we're going to put it in again as centered as we can get it put it down like that and then just let it let it just go in on these little pieces so I'm just going to leave it just for a second and you can see all of the different colors and things coming across which I think just adds to the interest of it so these have got just little tiny little pieces of brusho on there, which I think look quite good. And then we're going to pick this one straight up. Oh, 
like that and you can see all of it has gone across because it was dry so it's two ways of doing it um, and I've got a bit of a splot down on there but I don't think it matters if I bring that up can you see all the different colors and things that you have in there which I think is quite quite pretty on there and I, I don't mind having those little tiny pieces on there I think that actually looks quite nice in fact I might even just take my fan brush and do a couple of little trying to do it quite gently because I don't want too much on there but just a couple of other little bits in there because that just gives like that just a few little bits of water because it gives that just a different texture as it sort of starts to starts to come I don't know whether you can see that on there you've just got a little bit of extra texture in there so that is I want to try and just get a little bit more on there oh that's a big blob right now I can hear it hitting on there a bit and I think I'm going to take this off see how damp it is and I just want to put that on top to just take those pieces off you can see where I did my little sp spot because I want to just have those little water bits on there that's better so I've now got just some extra little water blobs on there which I think looks quite nice so we need to let this dry and then we can do something with it so I will be doing over the, um, this is sort of part one, I will be doing some more um, later on because I don't know how long that this will actually take to dry. I can take my tray out of the way now. It just contains everything and stops, particularly things like brusho, which are quite um, highly pigmented, it stops them going everywhere. So I'm just going to move my brayer and stuff out of the way and my brushos and things so that I don't have it everywhere and we've now got two different backgrounds so this was lots of water very muted this is hardly any water well no water on the cardstock and um, and just sort of fairly dry so I'm going to just heat this up just a little bit and see if I can dry this out if you leave it to dry, it will um, it will be a little bit darker because as you um, dry it, it will um, get a little bit paler. But I'm doing it on both sides so that you can see how the paper will warp as it's drying. So it shows that it's wet. But if you do it on both sides, it dries out a little bit. You can mask it. Um, to keep it flat I'm not overly overly concerned and I think that that will probably be fine this one I don't think is too bad I'm just going to give it just a little whiz to just see okay so we now have two very different backgrounds on here I'm just trying to see how how dry they are because I don't want to be stamping on them if they're not if they're not very dry but I think that that's might just give it another little whiz. So you can see on here that it is, uh, it's really nice actually. It's got a really nice um, muted look to it. And as I say, all of these techniques and things, I'm using stuff that I've already got. So it's, um, it really is using your stuff, that's better. I'm just going to put that on there right okay I'm going to take the water out of the way because I don't want to I know what I'm like if I keep the water anywhere near me it's going to go on the tray otherwise I will be I will knock it and it'll go everywhere okay so water and everything out of the way so these are our two cards now we can do two different things with them or something very similar it's entirely up to us and how we do it I just need to bend this so that it comes back um, 
but it gives such a lovely background. I love both of them. I think both of them look beautiful. Apart from this is not going to sit flat, but that's all right. As I say, you can um, you can mask it down if you want to. I'm not overly, overly, overly fussed because once we start stamping, it'll be fine. And this one, as I say, we've got a little spot at the bottom, but again, that's fine. Now, what I have done is I have cut out a... Let me see if I've got it on here. I've cut out a mask. Um, here we go. Only because if I want to do something on here, and it is a little bit bigger because I didn't have a circle exactly the same size as this um, this um, jelly plate, media plate, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I don't want my little pieces and things going at the bottom. Now I've pulled out some old things. So I've got flowering fields, anything that's got little bits of foliage in. So I really like this one with these little white pieces in because I can use the Posca pen to just put the white in there. So I like that one. Um, I've got this one which again has beautiful silhouettes in here. That I think would look lovely just on its own. Little bird, little bit of a tree. Um, and I've got this one, which is pocket silhouettes, which again is very, very old, but again has got lovely little bits and pieces like that in. That's what you want. So anything that's got little tiny foliage pieces in is what we need for this. So I'm going to take this one first, I think, which is the paler one. And I'm going to put this little bit of the mask in on here, just in on the bottom, only so that when I stamp, it's not going to come out. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't come all the way over. I'm just making sure that it doesn't come out. And I think for this one, I might just do... Do I do one image or not? I really want to try using this one because I love that on there so I'm having a look to see this one with the little there we are I think that's really pretty and you know we were doing the coloring before so I might actually do um, that one as let's have a look and see so we're going to do these with straight on in in um, black I think or I might do it in a colour um, this is where I'm going to dither a bit so um, let's have a look and see what we're going to do colour wise um, I'm going to do it in have a look. We've got some purple so I've got some purple because I quite like purple um, I want a bright sort of green so let's have that because purple and green look nice together. Very different, but they will work beautifully. And I think that's probably, um, I want a little bit of a, pink one. Okay, we'll have a little bit of pink as well, I think. Um, oh, I don't know whether I've got much ink in that one. Um, let me have a look on here. That's a nice pink one. And I know I've got some refills in there. So again, I'm using all sorts of things I've already got. Um, and I'm going to do for this one. I'm going to do some of these ones, I think. So this is going to be in purple because I just fancy doing purple. Let's move that one out of the way. Whoops. So as I say, it's going to be a little bit of a longer video, but that's because there's lots going on. So I hope you don't mind those because I do it as I do it. So I'm going to take these ones first and I'm going to have one like that. Oh, that's lovely. like that and then maybe one like that oh I like that they are really pretty it's funny isn't it how you don't use something for a long time like years 
and uh, and then you suddenly find them again or look through your I've got a um, a bookcase now we're not talking a small bookcase here I've probably got oh I don't know approaching 200 different stamps so I've probably got every stamp that you could imagine to uh, to do different ideas and designs and things which is why I was like turning around and saying to everybody um you know use your stash use what you've got um now i want to do some little pieces in um do i use the same ones this is where i'm looking to see so do i do these or do i do some more silhouette ones i think i'm going to do some more silhouette ones on here um now what i should do for comparison is do exactly the same thing on both shouldn't i okay so this is on the first one so this is on the watercolor let's do exactly the same thing on the um just the ordinary cardstock so we can see so i'm just putting my mask now i've got to be careful on here actually in fact let me see if that comes lower down could really have had that a little bit deeper couldn't I because this little piece at the bottom I don't want to have bits coming on there so it um, it might actually make them so this is going to be exactly the same in the purple so we'll have a big one now this is there is more of a pattern to this so that it's not going to be probably quite as visible in fact, yes, that's if you look at that, that's not going to work quite as well. So I shall probably use more of the silhouette ones in on there because they are going to work better. So I'm going to do it exactly the same, but with um, let's do something that's got more silhouette in. So these, particularly these ones, I think these are going to look quite nice, I think. So I'm going to do them in the purple. And we let's put this little mask thing down. And I'm going to have one in the centre. That's better. You can see how that's now coming through. And we'll have a little bit just in on the side there. And a little bit just in on the side there. That's better because that's that works nicely. And as I say, even though I'm using a very dark purple, it works quite well. Um, now I've got this sort of one and I'm going to use the, I think I'm going to carry on with the purple on this, um, cause I quite, it needs to be quite dark. So I'm not taking too much of the stalk because I just want it sort of coming up. Let's put it up the side here like that. And we'll have one. So it's just going to come out of the center like that. So without doing the bottom on it it means that you've got just a little bit of extra pieces coming through and then what's the other one i've got i've got this one on here haven't i so again i'm not going to be i'm trying to stamp it so i don't stamp on here because i just want to have some extra foliage and stuff coming through and i'm going to just take this to there so I can just take it up like that, this one on here, and I can take this like that so it just tucks in. And I think that that looks really quite pretty because you haven't got too much going on there. And I think that works quite well. Sometimes you don't want too much. So I'm going to put that to one side. This I do want to carry on in slightly different colours. So we've got that with these ones. Then I was going to do, um, what have we got on here? These are quite nice, aren't they? With the little spriggly bits. Have I got those? Did I get them out? Oops. Yes, I did. There's me looking and thinking, oh, I've got one missing. I haven't, I've already taken it out. Because I've obviously thought, oh, that's quite good. So I'm going to do this in the bright green, I think. So let's just open this one up. And then this is going to have 
let's take this out and put this mask in like that. And then we'll have these ones. I've got the stems and things as well. That can go in the middle. Oh, that's interesting because that's not that's not as bright, obviously. So that just adds a little bit of more of sort of texture, doesn't it? Like that, which is quite pretty. And then I'm going to take from this silhouette one just a little bit of I quite like this one and it looks to me it could be a little bit of sorrel so I'm going to use this in a pink to just have a little bit of sorrel coming through and I'm going to use the stalks as well and I'm going to have that over the top in here so like that like that and like that so I think that that will look yes that looks lovely so that's quite pretty in and around there so I'm just gonna clean that off and then I just want to take as I did before, let me move some of these bits out of the way, otherwise we've got too much going on. So this is literally just floral background and we can then add things to it as we go ahead. So that's given us two different ones, exactly the same braying technique but more water on that because it's with a watercolour and spritzing it this as it was which I think I prefer that actually but it's it's busier now I'm going to take some um little these little Posca pens and Posca pens are very good because they are completely um opaque so you don't get any other colour um coming through so these work really well for doing little um flower heads like that so i can literally just put that in there we did it the other day with something and i really like that look so i'm just doing it in the center because i want the other pieces to still come through but it gives that real white look to it which is nice I can take that through like that and on these ones so that where it's over the top of something, although that's gone pink, but that's fine. So these can be little pink ones, I think. So I can just take them across there. And then we'll have a few little ones on here. And this is right down on the side so you can see now you've got some really nice white pieces um i just need to i can do that on there clean that off so that i haven't got any other color on it and then we've got we've got these little green pieces here now what i could do on there is to just I could keep them like that or I could add a little bit of something. I think I'm going to keep it like that because I think sometimes if you add too much in there, it's going to be too much. So we've got two different backgrounds. Um, if, we if you come back for the next video, I will show you how we finish those off. I've also done one other, which I might actually do at the same time. So this was done with a purple and then some orange brusho on there and again you can see that was actually um the ink pad wasn't as juicy again it was a watercolor ink and you've got another tone as well so i'm going to keep this like that for this time because we're already on over half an hour come back for the next one and i shall show you how we finish this off so thank you so much for watching me as always please stay safe and well Please be kind and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.